Well, uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, I just want to start with a kind of a basic question first, just so I know how to best prepare this. How many people have films that they're currently making? Okay. And uh, those films are about to be produced, are produced. Like, how many people are in production on them? Okay, and how many people are in post on them? Okay, and how many people are thinking about or, or, or in pre-production on them? Okay, okay. Um, well, I think today what we'll do is uh, kind of focus on some strategies and things that have worked uh, for me personally. Um, and then what I want to try to get to towards the end is uh, a demonstration from the audience, uh, a film, a project that somebody has here that then I'll break down and, and kind of hopefully collectively we can throw ideas at. Um, because once you can kind of know one, it, you can start to see how it works. So these points here are just some of the basic points that I usually work from. You know, I think it's really important to consider, you know, what your audience habits are, your own personal, like how, what do you do online? How do you consume media? I think that's a good place to start. Because um, what that does is it shows you basically um, you know, gives you an idea of uh, when you dissect it, it, it kind of helps uh, to kind of show you a path for yourself. Um, you know, who, who is your audience? And I think most importantly, why will they care? You know, why will they pay attention to your work? Um, you know, spend time thinking like them. Um, uh, you want to create a two-way conversation, which was talked about a lot yesterday, but I'll actually explain what that means today. Uh, be prepared to spend time responding. Um, a lot of the times uh, social media requires you to be social, um, which I know can be problematic, but it ends up taking, you, you, can, you can split it into times that are a little more effective for yourself and you can figure out good ways to manage that and we'll talk about that a bit. You wanna build uh, trust. That, that's a very difficult one and it's also very easy sometimes to you have to be careful of it because you can, you can experience an uprising within the audience if you're not careful. Uh, you want to think of your audience as collaborators and if you do that, that can help to crowdsource a good considerable amount of work for yourself. Because one thing I'm always asked is, well, that seems like a lot of work. Well, it's, it is a lot of work, but the, the sooner that you can bring the audience in and kind of flip them over to being collaborators with you, the easier it is, and uh, you'd be surprised how much they do to help you. Um, have a clear call to action, and I'll explain what that means. Basically, when somebody gets to your site, make it easy for them to realize how they can help you. But uh, you don't want to just make it like, um, you want to make it so it's fun and part of the process. And I'll explain some examples of that as we go through. Uh, reward and respect the audience. Yeah, I think that's pretty obvious. Uh, the audience cannot be controlled. Uh, as I was saying before, they can rise up. Uh, some tools aren't for everyone. The idea that uh, you, you do the tools and the, the audience will come um, is, uh, is not necessarily true, um, which goes into the 12th point. And then being willing to experiment and then sharing your findings with other filmmakers. Um, I want to start with the idea, the first tool that's very, very important is, is, a, is a site. Uh, we always recommend uh, a site that is active as opposed to a static site. A static site will be a classic site of like, it'll either be Flash or it'll be very basic. It'll be, uh, you know, your cast crew, trailer, you know, and there's no way for anybody to pull something from that. So we usually recommend not to do a static site, but to do an active site. Blogs are active sites. Uh, WordPress is a great blogging solution. Uh, it's what I personally use. It's an open source solution. Uh, WordPress is great uh, for a number of reasons. It's very easy to get up and going. If you go to wordpress.com, you can get a free blog from them. There's two ways that you can use WordPress. You can either host it on an ISP. Everybody know what an ISP is here? Okay. You can host it on an ISP or you can use the free service which is wordpress.com. If you use the free service, it'll just be whatever the name of your film is, .wordpress.com. You can also use Blogger. That's another solution. You can use uh, movable type. There's a whole bunch of them. The thing that makes a blog effective is um, 
is the fact that it has RSS, which is really simple syndication. And most blogs will have a feed. Now what that means is instead of you always pushing stuff to people, they can come and subscribe to that feed in one of two ways. They can either take the feed and put it into a feed reader or through feedburner.com, uh, that's feedburner.com, they can, you can get a, a tool that will allow you to have them uh, subscribe via email. So if they subscribe via email or you use your feed reader, anytime they put something into the blog, you will be updated. Because the odds of getting somebody to come back to your site are really, really hard. You know, that's why we, uh, you know, I always say, try to make sure it's an active site as opposed to a static site. Because if it's static, chances of them coming back after the first time of them seeing it, slim to none. So uh, this is an example of the back end of WordPress. There's a whole dashboard that you can make use of. Um, and what's nice about WordPress too is uh, they have a ton of themes. Themes are what are the looks of your site. There's literally thousands of them. And you can get them and install them very easily into your blog. And then they have thousands of plugins. Plugins that can do all kinds of things. You know, that can help you share, uh, that can help you do uh, um, all kinds of media integration so you can easily add videos, audio, um, whatever you're looking for. So, so that's WordPress. So it usually starts with a blog. Um, these are just some examples of some blogs. What's interesting here about TechCrunch, I don't know if anybody's familiar with it. Michael Arrington started this blog. It, it deals with um, uh, startups. But the reason I bring it up is he was very focused on, on his audience. And he took TechCrunch from a one-person operation to where it was making, I guess, about a quarter of a, quarter of a million dollars a month in advertising. To now it's a multiple, you know, there's multiple people that work for him. But he, he knew that who the audience was and he effectively serviced that audience and stayed true to that message. You know, so they always knew when they were going there what it was and he was like a filter for that type of news and he's been very successful with it. So these are just two examples of uh, blogs. Um, here's another uh, example of using WordPress. This you can start to see is a little more integrated. Um, and this starts to make use of more of a, kind of a, a media based. You know, so you have video integration, you know, uh, stills, comments, which are always very important. Um, so that's uh, rosy.com. Um, just some other views of it. Uh, Flickr, if uh, any of you don't know about it, um, Flickr is a great way to, to, I've used it for all my press materials, you know, um, because what I can easily do is give uh, links to the media and you'd be amazed how many times just by having my, my, uh, my materials in easy accessible form, I've been able to get better coverage. You know, like if they're doing a group article and I have the photos there and they can easily get them and they're 300 DPI, they'll, they'll run that image. You know, because a lot of the times uh, it's about resolution for them in the end. So Flickr is a nice, they have a free service and a pro service. And it also works really well. You, I've done effective things with it where I've let the audience, uh, I've given them at times uh, an email address so they can upload pictures from some of the things that we've done event-wise. So they'll upload it and I'll tell them to tag it a certain way. And then I'll have a whole repository in a set of all the stuff that happened at that event from all different perspectives, which is, which is pretty neat. So. Um, so that's a, a use of uh, photos. So here's Flickr. Flickr also integrates RSS, so you can know when somebody updates their photos. And you can do sets and, and uh, easily share with people, so that's a, a great resource. Delicious. Uh, how many people know what social bookmarking is? Okay. Yeah, so uh, social bookmarking is kind of, you know how your browser allows you to bookmark a page. Well, social bookmarking allows you to bookmark those pages and, and hold them in a repository online. But then you're able to share them with other people. So you can give them certain tags, you can put them into certain sets. And bookmarks are really great because if you're active with them, you can end up not only discovering a lot of other material, but you can also use it as a, as a way to, um, like I've used it very effectively as a way to take the feed from Delicious and then put it back into something. So anytime I bookmark an article about a movie that I've made or something that I thought was relevant or interesting, wherever I put that 
feed, like in the blog, like I was talking about WordPress, it'll just automatically show up. You know, so I can just bookmark it, and then it just shows up on whatever site I want to put it on. Does that make sense to everybody here? Okay. Oh, wait, sorry, I didn't understand that. Sure, sure. Where, uh, where, are, you, where are you putting the bookmark? The, I bookmark off the web, uh -huh. but then once I've taken the RSS feed from it, which is that really simple syndication, mm -hmm. I'm laying that into my WordPress blog. There's like widgets that it has gotcha. that allows you to put it in, and then it's there. Uh, yes? Yes. You're going to do jobs aggregating all the other stuff so that you just put it in one place, they subscribe there. Yes. And they get the ability to be rooted right. to the different things. To totally, because you can mash up RSS feeds. Um, there's a thing called RSS. Sorry, would you mind just repeating kind of what he said? Because it's not. Oh, OK. He's talking about uh, creating one aggregation hub, taking all your data, putting it into one place, you know, and making it easy for whoever's subscribing. So they subscribe to the one feed. Um, there's uh, a service called uh, RSS Mixer, and that's rssmixer.com. And then there's another one called xfruits.com. Those are what are known as like mashup tools for RSS. So you can basically take all the feeds you want. You could take your delicious feed, you could take your Flickr feed, your blog feed, and you can put them all into one. So then when somebody subscribes to that, they're going to get all the enclosures. Enclosures are when all of a sudden you'll, you'll look at a feed and the pictures come into it, or video comes into it, or audio comes into it. So it's an easy way to be able to use RSS and combine it all into one place if, if, if you're looking to take a lot of these tools and simplify them into one feed. Uh, is it uh, two ways? Or is it not subscribing to the RSS feed number or respond somehow? Will that get popular back? Well, if you want to respond somehow, the, the typical way Within RSS, um, the, there are services that exist that allow you to do that, like Friend Feed. Uh, I know that Twitter is working towards that, and you can use Twitter that way. But there's nothing that currently exists within WordPress that I'm aware of that you can then go in and, and comment directly into that feed. You can comment into the blogs. So you don't have to go back to the site and comment there. Yeah, yeah. And then you can do that. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, so this is delicious, and uh, that's a social bookmarking tool. Stumble upon is a uh, Reddit. Um, those are all social bookmarking tools. Uh, here's an example of uh, the blog that I run for myself. Um, it uh, it's integrating quite a bit of things. Um, it, it has uh, feeds, which are. I have feeds coming in on both sides. This is an example of feeds that come from the workbook project into my site. Um, this is me. Uh, my Twitters are coming in there. Uh, I have an inter integration of Flickr off the top. And I have a main Twitter thing that comes in that updates anytime I want off my phone. Um, and then obviously the central part is a blog. You can see that you can lay all kinds of things into the sidebar. So that's a, that's a use of um, a WordPress instance. Uh, this is Yahoo Pipes, which is a way to kind of, for those that are a little more advanced or interested in messing around with how you can really control the RSS feeds, this is a, this is a very nice service that uh, Yahoo has, which is free. <coughs> but it is definitely in the advanced category. Um, these are just two. Oh, this is a great tool. I mentioned this yesterday. This is WebsiteGrader.com. It's an excellent way to look at the, uh, get an evaluation of your current site. You know, how is it working with search engines? What is it comparable to other sites? This will literally spit out a full report for you and give you a grade. It'll tell you, you know, how many Google pages you're accessed on. It'll tell you how many incoming links you have. It'll tell you how many people have socially bookmarked you. It's a really great way to start, and it's totally free. So they'll give you a grade on both either a Twitter account or on a uh, on your blog itself um, or your website. So that's a good starting point.
a little hard for me to see. Um, that's uh, to the right is just another example of, of somebody else using a blog. The, what's interesting about, um, and this is a kind of a, an interesting point, there's, there's probably a couple, there's a couple different theories in terms of how you can build an audience. There's the theory of being totally transparent, putting yourself out there and, and, and just, you know, being very free and doing what you're doing, like Julia here is very much like Julia is the front of the brand that she creates or the audience, you know, the audience knows who Julia is. Some people aren't comfortable with necessarily being the front of it, you know, they might want the film to be the front of it. So I think there's always a management there, you know, like when you have to kind of ask yourself, okay, what, what, you know, what do I want to put forth? You know, because you're going to have to give something that's engaging to the audience. You know, you're going to have to start a conversation with them. So how are you most comfortable doing that? You know, um, is it going to be a character that you extend from the story? Is it a social conscious element that you have because it's a documentary, somebody that you can relate to? Which brings me to another important point, and I know this isn't a tool, but it's, it's a foundation. You want to work from concentric circles. You want to say, okay, here's my core audience. And then you want to go out from there and you want to say, okay, who are other people who share this type of storyline, this type of vision, you know, that I can tap into their audiences. So, for instance, on a doc format, Robert Greenwald does a lot of political documentaries. He tapped into uh, an organization called moveon.org. And from there, he was able to use their mailing list, their database, and they shared a collective goal of reaching, you know, voters in the States. So I think what you want to do anytime you're going to go out to a community, uh, or somebody has a community, keep in mind that they've worked very hard to build that. So you want to go with an ask, meaning, you know, like when you go to talk to them, you want to say, okay, here's how I think it benefits you, and this is how it benefits me, you know, and, and be very clear about that. Yes? Sure. How do you ask these people? Do you, do you have to talk to them, or do you email them? Uh, I've done it all different ways. Um, uh, usually you, you come to them very prepared with something that you know they're going to be interested in. And that's, that's, the easiest, that's the easiest way. I've had the most results with that. You know, less friction there. You know, because then immediately they realize that, oh, you know who my community is. You know how to talk to my audience. It's not like you're just trying to push your way in. So, but I've done it via the phone by, uh, at times, faking extension numbers if it's a large party. Uh, and then I've done it in other ways where it's just email. You know, so, um, but I, sometimes I'll look to try to find somebody who's a voice within it who I think is a good conduit, you know, and, that, and that's worked well for me. So um, back to the tool part, that's uh, website grader. Uh, this is uh, an interact, uh, this is basically demonstrating kind of like uh, the idea of Google Feed Reader, uh, which, is a, which is another good tool and how you can bring back in. Let's see what, oh, this is friend feed, which I had mentioned before. Now, I want to specify that some, you know, we're laying out a lot of tools here. It's not like you have to use all of these. You know, so I'm just kind of giving you an overview of what's in the, in the market and what tends to be the higher end things or the most effective things. In the end, it's really going to come down to whether it's, it's worth your time to use them. Because uh, I think it was point 12 maybe. Um, you can create the accounts. But that doesn't mean that you're going to get an audience, you know, so it takes a lot of work. So you probably want to go through and kind of work from that. But friend feed is, is an interesting way to meet other people. And it's a way that feeds are, uh, you know, like they can get kind of your social graph, you know, so they can see where you're updating on Facebook or if you've updated on your blog or if you've done something with Flickr or so forth and so on. So friend feed is a, uh, is a service that kind of aggregates those feeds and creates a community around them. So here's Feed Burner, which I do think is a, an essential um, resource. It's free, um, and it's very easy to kind of burn your feed, and um, you can maintain more than one feed there. And it gives you, what's nice about Feed Burner is uh, the free service allows you to run a mailing list. Um, so you can have a blog, and every time you update that blog, uh, somebody will get an email. They'll get a daily email from you without you having to do anything. And then you can go in to the back end of the service and at any point extract as an Excel spreadsheet all those contacts. So it's not like the contacts are locked in their service. You're able to kind of take them at any point that you want. So it's a good way to easily manage uh, an email list just by 
doing your blog? Because a lot of times I'm always looking for ways to consolidate, ways that I can simplify what I'm doing. And that, that's been a very effective way. Because I used to run a list, and uh, it, it got to be a pain. So, and uh, FeedBurner will cover, like the Michael Arrington, he has like over a million readers who subscribe to his feed. So they're, they're, they're handling over a million people to him. So may that be your problem. You know? <laughs> Um, this is Twitter, uh, and uh, Twitter's actually worked out very well for me. You know, uh, it's worked out well in terms of keeping people in touch, mobilizing people to come to screenings. Uh, it's worked uh, very well uh, for others. The reason I have these three here is they're, they're kind of three different approaches to using Twitter. I use it very much as like a broadcast kind of mechanism, you know, where I can easily broadcast from my phone to the web. Um, and I use it as a way to kind of make announcements. Uh, Mickey uh, uses it to in a totally different way. She puts herself very out front. She is the personality, um, and she's been very successful with that. So everything is really kind of about what Mickey's doing, her life, how she's living it, and she has a lot of people who follow her. Alex, you, you probably saw yesterday. Alex uses it kind of as a cross between the two of us where she'll post certain things that are announcement-based, but then she, she's working her way into the, something similar to what Mickey's doing. But uh, those are you know, definitely very good tools for the, the ability to mobilize um, and, and also the ability to update easily. So Twitter is a, a pretty common one, free service. Um, this is uh, the idea of uh, Mebo and Plogo. Are, are simple ways that you can put an active element into your site. So let's say you wanted to have something where you just had a, a little chat window in there or an IM window. When people actually come to the site, unfortunately it's not in this example, but when people come to the site, they, uh, you can take Amiibo room and you can put that into your website. Um, and uh, Plugo, you can do the same thing. So basically what that means is when you're you can have, like you would have just like a little chat utility that sat on your site. So anytime that somebody went there and you happened to be online and they wanted to ask you a question, they could just enter it into your site and it would come up on your IM client. So then you could interact with them anonymously so they didn't have your IM screen name or anything like that. And you can use it as a way to engage people. The rooms, Mebo has rooms so multiple people can come in. So you can use that as a way to do a Q&A you can use it as a way to, um, to basically uh, prepare for a certain type of an event that you're doing if you have cast or crew. You know, because a lot of these things, they'll work to build an audience, but they'll also work and help you in the uh, production process and the post process, you know, because it's communication tools. So um, I've done a lot with like Mebo rooms where I've had tons and tons of people in them, you know, and just uh, going through and running some of the game elements that I've done or some of the secondary story elements that I'll push through a, a project. And then I've also used them to organize people who are helping me do screenings. You know, when, when I did a 17-city <laughs> theatrical tour across the US, I, I didn't do any, um, I didn't pay for any p and uh, I actually used my social networking friends and, uh, and other social tools to get people out to help flyer for me, poster for me, and they brought all kinds of people out. So I use social media to do it, and uh, the Mebo rooms was like a way for us to organize. You know, like how are they going to go out to the local radio station? How are they going to help to drive people in? How could I tap the audiences that they had, so forth and so on? Um, I'm going to skip. Oh well, actually, this is a good one. Uh, Tube Mogul here and Google Analytics. They're two two very nice uh, things. Google Analytics obviously can help you keep up with what's going on with your site. Um, it's simple code that you can put into a page, but then you can go in and it charts everything. It gives you a good idea of where traffic is going, and, and, and that often helps you to figure out, like, you can sometimes find, like, a directing URL, you know, like, someplace that the discussion came from to you. And I've found it as a good way to kind of go through and look at that list of all those and then go in and look at them and then often go back and comment or make mention in some way back to the original source. Because everybody knows how the web, uh, like how search engines work, right? It, do I need to, would it help if I said that, uh, gave you an explanation, or are you guys 
up to speed. Don't be shy. You know, if somebody doesn't know, I'll just explain it that way. I won't, I won't out anybody. <laughs> um, so uh, it's all about uh, hyperlinking. It's all the number of times that somebody's linking back and forth to you. It's, it's very simple. And then what, the, uh, what, the, the, you know, what uh, the search engines do is they just read that. So for instance, head trauma, when I made my film Head Trauma, a very common word. You type it in, you have no idea what you're going to get. Um, I worked head trauma from 100 pages in to like the number one spot. And what I did was I, I created a number of different sites and blogs and did that interconnecting stuff with the RSS feeds. All of a sudden, all these links were going back and forth. I went out, I commented, and I pushed it all the way from you know, thousands in to where it sits like I think today <coughs> within the top three or top five on a Google thing. You'll pay a lot of money to have a service do that for you. So, um, don't you, when you have to pay to set up each of those sites, I mean, is there a free No, website? yeah, you can use blogs. That's what's beautiful. You can use the blogger, you can use WordPress, you can use all those things which are free services, and then you just start to interconnect them. You know, so. Does the Google Analytics, they work on blogs, I think? Yes, yes, blogs. exactly, exactly, exactly. Um, uh, I just, uh, if I could get a time check, how much more? 15 minutes. 15 minutes? Okay. After the 15? Okay. Uh, 10 and then maybe 5 minutes. Okay. Uh, Tangler, I'm going to speed through these so we can get into an implementation of somebody's project. Uh, Wet Paint is a free way to do a wiki. Um, it's a, a decent service. So wikis are actually pretty interesting in terms of being able to, to build a, a repository of information or a fan community. Um, some people have done that to great effect. Uh, over here we have Tangler, which is uh, kind of a forum, uh, but it's like a web 2.0 forum. It, you can have rich media, you can, uh, you can put audio into it, video into it, obviously links, and uh, it's a free service, so Tangler is a, is a decent service to use. Mm, that's, uh, I, I'll skip that for right now. Okay, we get into the basic blogs. Okay, uh, here's, here's an example. This is, I wanted to show just, this is the workbook project. Um, this is kind of an example of, you know, how the site looks, you know, because it doesn't classically look like a blog. You know, so themes in WordPress can be very diverse. Um, and then uh, this is Kite, where we do a lot of live streaming. So, or we can use it as an upload. So there's a couple services like this that, that I've made use of. Kite, uh, Ustream is another one. Um, uh, and both of those are, are, are decent. There's a, there's a new thing called 12 Seconds, which is kind of like Twitter, but it has video integrated into it. And there's Seismic, which is another video and Twitter kind of combination. How do you spell Seismic? Seismic. It's S-E-E-M-I-C, I believe. So um, yes, but the, the, the workbook project also, I should mention, the workbook project has a, a site uh, called Pollinate which is all about audience. You know, so all you have to do is go to the workbook project or you can go to pollinate, uh, I'm sorry, audience.workbookproject.com and the, the site is run and has a lot, a lot of resources about building audiences. There's a whole how-to there. Uh, so I definitely recommend that you check that out. Um, uh, YouTube, obviously, this is Mickey's stuff, who I mentioned before where she, you know, kind of documents a lot of her life. This was when she was going to buy roller skates. She's a, she's a, she does roller derby. So, um, you know, that, that was just, uh, just fun. So had you built that channel for herself on YouTube? Yes, and, yes. And is that free? Yes, yeah, that's <laughs> totally free. YouTube and MySpace provide both those services where you can, you can easily create channels for yourself. YouTube has um, a number of... Uh, simple ways that you can integrate YouTube back into the blog that you have. Um, all the videos are embeddable, you know, so you can easily put them back into your own site. Um, and you can also subscribe to videos. Here, here is um, Robert Greenwald. I mentioned him. And what, what's interesting about this is he's engaging the community in a variety of ways. He's reaching out to them and asking for their opinions. He's sharing that with other people. Now, this is a little more involved than you probably would do, but you could easily do this with a blog, you know, asking questions, having people respond, you know, making, you know, kind of creating that conversation. But he's also very, very good and effective at a call to action. Like, you go there, 
Why am I there? What am I trying to do? How can I help? How can I be a part of this? It's amazing to me, like, how many times you'll go to sites and you can't find where to subscribe to an email, you know, for an email uh, update on the site or for news. You, you don't know when the screenings are. You can't take, like, a little badge with you, you know, so if you really support that thing, you want to be able to put it somewhere else. A lot of people don't do banners like that. So it's always good to kind of create a couple banners you know, with, with whatever your message is. So then the people who are diehard fans, and I've had them put them all over the place, and then you look through the analytics and you'll see they're coming back from all over. And then making the video very easy for them to embed, but having a very clear call to action is, is valuable. Uh, Obama has done this very well in the United States. In September, he raised $150 million by having very clear, uh, you know, all, you know, that's online. So you see his clear, yeah, granted, this is a little, gonna be a little higher end than some people can do, but these things are, are easy for you to do. You know, you can have Facebook, MySpace, YouTube, Flickr, Dig. These are all the places that he can be accessed. You can do the same thing very easily. There's plugins for various blogs that allow you to have the same thing here. Um, you know, some of this, you, you know, there are free services if you're interested in doing text messaging stuff. It um, uh, just depends. Uh, yeah, and then he, he's very clear about his call to actions, obviously. Uh, uh, Threadless was just an example of these guys took a, a, a need which they felt was there. The, the, uh, they designed t-shirts and they felt like there weren't any good t-shirts in the market. So they turned around and they said, you know what, we're going to create t-shirts, but we're going to let designers create t-shirts that they would like to see. And so Threadless took this little upstart and turned it into like a $30 million a year business, designing t-shirts. Every single t-shirt that they do is voted on by the other people who are the designers. Every single one that they've ever made is sold out. So uh, let's, let's move, uh, you guys knew Iron Sky. So let's, let's move into an example because I think that that'll really help you. Um, let me try to find somebody that has a project here that, um, that will work. Let me go back to this first slide here. Does anybody have any questions about the tools before we get into an example of how to build audience with uh, somebody's project? Yes. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the question is, um, it <coughs> seems like there's more, uh, there's more uh, features that are available with the, you know, WordPress, away from WordPress.com. Uh, you can do more with a, a basic installation of WordPress as opposed to WordPress.com. And that, that's correct. Uh, so for those who want to install it, it's very simple to install on your ISP. You just need uh, an FTP program. Um, and then from there, it's, it's pretty basic. Um, so uh, yes, you had a question? Is there an online banner creation tool or is it just go learn the piece of code itself? Oh, it's really, it's really easy. If you know how to put a file up on an FTP, you know, via FTP, you can just take, okay. Um, the question is uh, about banner creation. Is there an easy way to create a banner? And there are actually online sites that will create banners for you, but it's so basic. Once you have the, 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 the image, just upload the image. Uh, image tags are very simple in HTML, and then you can, you can easily find, you'll want to put it into a text enclosure, you know, so the code can sit there, you know, uh, but it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, yes? Um, how much time do you spend a week doing all this? How much time do I spend a week doing all this? Yeah. Um, well, uh, well, I spend quite a bit of time doing it. You know, I think that the, uh, a good example is there's a really successful, um, and I cannot remember Gary's last name, but Gary runs a thing, and I think it's Wine Library TV or .TV or something like that. And he has a very successful wine business. And, but he's very engaged in social media, you know, and he, he has so many people to come and, and it's only helped his wine business grow even more. Um, I think he spends, on average, what he said was upwards of like 10 hours responding to people. So that's him. But, but he, also has, he also has a $50 million wine business. So I, I think he can take that time to build that brand the way he does. I don't spend nearly that amount of time responding. Um, I, I break it into chunks, you know, the amount of time that I spend, and, and I've gotten very good at it over time. There are certain things when you find the balance with it 
that you can just go, like, if, you, if we go to the, the, the workbook project, I put up a post yesterday, or, or late last night, that was me just recording one of the talks, Jamie's talk yesterday. And I just went back and I encoded it and uploaded it. It took me maybe 10 minutes to do, you know, but then there was something new there. So I think it's finding the pattern of what you're comfortable with um, and realizing that it is going to take time. A lot of the times what I recommend is you find, um, this has worked well for me, interns. You know, I found young uh, college students who were very interested and also very good at, at it. So when I explained it, they took to it right away. Um, that's, a, that's an easy way, uh, a free way. Um, and then, uh, um, otherwise it does take time, I, I can't lie. I, I wish I could say it was, it was simple, but it, it does take time. Yes? Is anybody working on like a digital hub or a widget to kind of bring all these elements in? Because I spend the most time spent with like logging in, logging out, hopping around, yeah. all these yeah. Um, there, there, there's a movement towards open ID and open social, and I was kind of talking about data portability yesterday, the idea of being able to take and easily go from one site to another. As far as tool sets, there are numerous people in the market that are trying to create tools for filmmakers to be able to use. Some of those are proprietary pay services. Um, some of them are free. Uh, you know, um, it just depends. So, I mean, I usually kind of go at it from what's most effective in the market, because a lot of times the thing that you're, you're benefiting from is penetration. You know, the fact that these, these communities have audiences already, you know, and you just are trying to find effective ways to engage those audiences. So uh, let's take somebody's project, because I think that'll help. And yeah, we uh, just produced a film called Heavy Line. It's a documentary about a punk band. We just did a, we distributed ourselves. We just had a theatrical, we were in the IC for two weeks. We had the Empire Desk Square probably. And now the key thing is, you know, how do we get these people to buy DVDs and we actually make money because the theatrical is not a Okay. Um, now, the interesting thing about the band is obviously they're from, half of them are mentally disabled. Okay. So there's the disabled community and they created a campaign called Stay Up Late because if you're disabled, you have to go, the care is not off, so you have to go home at 9.30. So whenever they did a gig, half their audience would go home. So they created this kind of actual charity and we were thinking that we could use that kind of, you know, uh, link in with, we already have sponsorship from MenCap, which is the largest disabled kind of uh, organization here. Right. We use their mailing list to kind of get people onto something like a blog, keep that updated, and then, you know, but our key thing is how can we get people to buy the DVD without seeming to shove that down their throat and say, hell, we want to make money off you, because in the end, we're distributing a film to make, you know, to make money for the filmmaker. Right, right. Well, I think there's always a, that's a fine balance, you know, but um, I think that we were already off to a great start. I mean, you found, it's that concentric circle thing. You identified the subject of the documentary. You found a, an organization that you, that you can work with. I'm sure there are other organizations you can tap into as well. Um, in terms of converting that, uh, you know, and converting it into a purchase, uh, you know, doing some of the live event based things uh, could be good. You know, doing some stuff where you're taking the music and using it, creating a radio channel in some particular way that you can use with the subjects. Uh, you know, so, there are, so you actually have an ongoing thing. You know, like maybe you could even do some simple audio podcasting with them. You know, something that would bring people back on a regular basis. Um, I think in terms of that point of action, you could do it around a, an interesting contest that you kind of bring it in. Maybe one of the character, uh, subjects of the yeah. documentary could uh, spawn, you know, quote unquote, have, uh, you, you, could, uh, you could do something where one of them was giving it away in some way, or you could have a contest that went around the DVD, so then you're putting the DVD at the front of people's knowledge, and they're like, they're, 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 maybe you're asking them to compose songs, maybe you're asking them to compose lyrics, whatever it is, um, but you're putting the DVD in front of them in a very casual way, and then you can easily have, chances are other people are going to want to purchase it you know, once they hear about it. I think the one thing you want to do is kind of very subtly start to bring it back into the conversation wherever you can. And when you can have other people talking about it, that's always the best bet, you know. So it's not you just saying, please buy my DVD. Yeah. It's you having somebody who's talking about the DVD. Go out to some other people who support that community and have them, um, you know, go out to other bloggers and you know, give them the DVD and encourage them to write about it. That's always a great way. Then make sure you go and comment on their blogs. But when you go and comment on somebody's blog, just don't go and 
put a link, you know, comment and add to the discussion, and that'll end up bringing more traffic to you. Um, so that, 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 that's worked very well for me. It's about joining the discussion, basically. It's simple. It's like people who, and granted, I'm... Right. And I was, I was going to say, granted, when people are always talking at you, and then I was thinking, okay, well, I'm talking at you. But the idea is that you, you want to have a two-way conversation. It's much more enjoyable. So, but I think, you know, very subtly laying it in there and, and giving action to it and giving it value within the community. Um, you know, there's a great example of, uh, there's a new service, I think it's called uh, 61. Um, it's a music discovery, massive multiplayer game. So everybody kind of goes and finds music and then you're kind of rated and it's, a, it's an interesting way to discover music and play a game at the same time. So sometimes it's just finding those things that can be fun. You know, I think sometimes people forget about the fun part, you know, so. Uh, who else has a project that we, can, that we can hit? Anybody else that can help? Yes, in the back. I was starting, um, I won't say the subject itself, but I can tell you the context of it because it okay. really matters. But uh, a young outcast in high school that okay. gets a condition that forces him to uh, reevaluate his identity in okay. the context of high school. Okay. So I, I'm trying to develop it as a, a web serial. Okay. So you have five, ten minute episodes no matter the week. Sure. Okay. Peer pressure, peer pressure okay, so is it a drama or is yeah, it? Drama. Okay. Drama, dark comedy, drama. Okay. One one thing that's really good too that I should note is any time that you're about to start, you know, look and see what else is going on, what else somebody's done, what you think is effective, and some of the answers can lie right within that. In terms of a serialized thing like that, when you have multiple characters, a drama, very easy to employ the social media stuff that I had. There, so each of the characters could easily have their own Twitter account. They could have their own, you know, Flickr account. They could have uh, their own Facebook account. Whatever, however ex you wanted to extend that. And I've done a lot of things where I've done like story reconnaissance, where I've created characters and pushed them into the real world in that manner. Like I've used Twitter as a storytelling device, not just as a promotional device. Like characters from my stories or my games actually live there, so you can interact with them. So I think that's a, that's a great way to, to work with a narrative or even a documentary where you can give the characters you know, that, that place. You're in a good spot because you're starting. It's a, and, and if you're going to do a web-based thing, you should really engage social media that way. So I would look and say, OK, you obviously have the characters. Um, if there's that element of depression and you want to tap into that, it's that concentric circle thing. Well, you know. Right. Discussion around depression right. uh, or you know, peer pressure or something like that. And then hopefully pair up with a charity or a service that you know, specializes in that and somehow link back to them so you provide service. Right. Well, the one thing to keep in mind when you go to do that is that value proposition. Mm -hmm. If you're bringing content to somebody who normally wouldn't produce content, yeah. a lot of those agencies or groups wouldn't produce content. Right. So once you have your package of content, you say, we're putting the discussion out there, this is what it is, there's gonna be this web content that you can make use of, here's a, the discussion points that people can enter in. It's hitting and, you know, and, and, and that age group is very good with social media. So now they're interacting, they're discussing directly either with the characters or with the filmmakers or whoever you decide to do that. You, you have like the really good basis there where you have the ability to use the characters in a social context bring a package of value to those outlets. Um, like the example that where you created a campaign around something. You can kind of come and say, hey, look, I have this content already. You might be a nonprofit. You might be a community service. You don't have a budget to create content. Let's team up in some particular way. Then your message can start to go across their sites, their blogs, you know, and you can hit, yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I use Facebook. I use MySpace. I, I, I kind of have a little bit of social networking burnout, you know, uh, to be honest. I, I think that they're valuable in some ways. Um, I think the problem is they, they keep a lot of that data. So, like, uh, you know, I, I can't really access those people away from that service. So, I'm very interested in creating ways that. Uh, you know, whether it be a simple thing like feed burner or a list that I manage or getting somebody's email and their zip code, which is very, very important. 
you know, because then that way when I go out, I can see where that attention is, you know, where the fans are. Oh, they're all located here, you know, so. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I don't send all my resources over there when all the people are over here, you know, so. Um, but I, I do, it's good to have presence on those things. Uh, it's debatable. Those things only give back as much as you put into them. You know, so it, it's a matter of the time issue that we talked about before. You know, and as I say, not all these tools are going to work for everybody. You know, you can use one effectively and it could, you know, it could do uh, the same thing as having 20 of them. You know, it just depends on how much you put into it. Um, Okay, does anybody else have another project I can help with? I came all the way over here. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. I've got an environmentally themed project. Okay. Um, the original story is based on true events that happened 25 years ago. Okay. But I'm using it really as a metaphor for you know, helping raise awareness with people about the environment today. Okay. Um, the story is told through six different perspectives. Okay. So there are kind of six key characters who interact in the course of the story. Okay. Um, it's still in development, so I'm brainstorming ideas at the moment for how to create a web platform that utilizes the characters to help in, you know, engage in global conversations around present day environmental issues. Yeah, I would, I would totally make use of Google Maps, you know, and I would do something where um, I could visually place them. And Google Maps are, are very easy, they're free to use, and you can put tags on them wherever you want. And now with Google Maps, you can add video to them. You can also add stills to them. So Google Maps are great for anybody who's trying to engage people geographically in different places. That would be an easy way for people to comment about their environmental stories and how they impact their lives. And you can use your characters to kind of put them out there. I'm going to turn this to the audience. Is there any other ways that people think that out of what we talked about or, or things personally that you guys think would be good? Um, go ahead. Adding, adding to the social bookmarking as well, there's something new called Twine which is you're able to uh, create a, a almost rope of interest that people can tag things to and expand upon. So that's also another, in, a, in terms of a call to action thing, that's as well something where you can involve an audience in uh, furthering some sort of idea or, or discussion on the subject. Yeah, and that's, uh, that's twine.com, right? Twine.com. Yeah. Um, any, anybody else have anything that they use or that they like? that we didn't cover? No? Does anybody have any additional questions? Well, uh, yes. um, this seems like an area of expertise. And I mean, I'm doing films. I'm making films, writing scripts, stuff like that. I, I don't think I'm going to be able to get to grips with all of this as well. Is right. it sensible to try? I mean, it feels like we need to meet internet people. We need to have a forum where we can meet internet people rather mm -hmm. than other filmmakers who are all trying to yeah. scrabble their way through this. I don't know, that's what I'm saying. I was saying, where would you... See, there's one in the back of the room there. Normally, yeah. I was just going to say, if, if in London there's um, Chinwag, which is quite good for um, digital meeting up, I think that's quite a good idea. Definitely um, find internet. I think um, filmmakers meeting internet, people who are internet savvy, would be a great yeah. place to meet. But I, I mean, I... Sure you, you, can also, you can also find those people online, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, the Workbook Project has a thing that's pretty neat called Mindshare, and you should check that out, where the resource goes to a certain point, and then there are people who are experts in certain areas who then help uh, you know, filmmakers. Is that got a UK presence? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's global, so. Um, but. Thank you very much, Aaron. Thank you.